Okay. He telling me we gotta kick it and he was like, right. yo, why don't we like go shopping or something? I mean, like I pay for it. And I was like, what the this just say? Luke from Two Live Crew. Yeah, he said he was to leave early. Yeah. <laughs> when Luke from Two Live Crew is leaving early, like you got a wild party. Uh, big deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. Guys, 2024 has been one wild ride from start to finish, and the internet has been hotter than a summer bonfire since day one. First, Cat Williams kicks down the door with his bombshell revelations, and then the whole Diddy drama explodes like a getting crazier by the hour. But you know what's really got people buzzing? It's not just the little guys stirring the pot. Some heavy hitters in the industry are getting in on the action too. Take 50 Cent, for instance. This man has been right in the thick of the Diddy debacle, almost like he's leading the charge against him. I mean, he's even cooking up a whole documentary about Diddy, and it doesn't seem like he's just messing around. And then you've got big shots like Joe Rogan jumping into the fray too. These guys have been dropping truth bombs left and right, and word on the street is there's even more they've said behind closed doors that hasn't made it to the public yet. So for those of you who haven't been keeping up with all this madness, buckle up because you're in for one heck of a ride. Now 50 Cent's been yapping about Diddy since day one, no doubt about it. In fact, when Cassie recently filed her lawsuit against Diddy and exposed him for essaying her and making her sleep with male SEX workers, 50 wasted no time in sending out his support for her. He put up a post dragging Diddy for filth after he settled Cassie's lawsuit within 24 hours. In a post that's now deleted, he basically hinted that Diddy's got more problems heading his way. In the caption, 50 Cent said, LOL, he paid that money real quick. Should have done that before the shark smelled blood in the water. And here they come in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Every woman he put his hand on. 50 followed it up by announcing he was going to do a documentary on Diddy and bring out the truth about everything that Diddy's been doing, as well as the people who have protected and helped him to carry out these crazy acts. He reposted an article about him developing a documentary about Diddy and captioned it, I thought Diddy was a billionaire music mogul. If he's smart, he will file bankruptcy now. Anyone with real money knows why I'm saying this. I'm the best producer for the job, guys. Here come the receipts. Fast forward to when Homeland Security raided two of Diddy's homes in connection to SEXTFK allegations. 50 wasted no time in getting on Instagram and clowning his foe. SHT just got real, 50 wrote in a now-deleted Instagram post. The feds in all the cribs, damn they got the kids in cuffs. In another post, 50 Cent said there was no way Diddy Diddy was coming back from this. Now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done, 50 wrote. They don't come like that unless they got a case. Things took a turn for the worse when 50 Cent's baby mama, Daphne Joy, got pulled into the mix. You can only imagine how 50 Cent reacted to this bombshell. 50 Cent's ex, Daphne Joy, is facing accusations of being Sean Diddy Combs' alleged in a new lawsuit. According to documents that got leaked to Fox News Digital, Lil Rod alleges that Diddy was straight up about having a whole squad of women on a monthly payroll. And apparently, one of those women named in the suit is none other than Daphne Joy. Now, Lil Rod's alleged that these women, including Joy, were getting paid a monthly fee to basically be Diddy's SEX workers. People are saying that this might not be far-fetched, because Diddy's been spotted following Joy on Instagram, and there are even pics of them chilling together in Miami Beach just last year. But Joy didn't have none of it. She's fired back hard, taking to Instagram to set the record straight. In a statement that she dropped, she straight up calls out Lil Rod's lawsuit as a bunch of lies and character assassination. She's also lawyering up and ready to take legal action against both Lil Rod and his attorney. I am deeply hurt by the lies in Rodney Jones' lawsuit. The claim that I am a SEX worker is 100% false and character assassination. She said, I am retaining an attorney to explore all legal remedies against both Rodney and his attorney. And you know, 50 Cent wasn't just gonna sit back and let things slide. He took to Twitter and dropped a bomb, posting a pic of Joy and Diddy with a caption that basically basically called her out. He says, you moved a mile away in hopes of having another baby with me, but I was busy. So you moved back and then you started receiving money from Brother Love. Now here we are, little SEX worker. But Joy wasn't about to let that slide. She came back swinging on Instagram saying, Curtis James Jackson, everything is a joke to you until our safety is compromised, which is happening now. You're wreaking real havoc, frenzy, and chaos into other people's lives. How would you feel if Sire was the one in handcuffs? For nothing. We moved to New York to give you 
you the opportunity to be a father to your son and you saw him 10, 10 times out of the two years that we lived one mile away from you. I am tired of upholding and protecting an image to our son that you have never heard. She would continue saying, let's put the real focus on your true evil actions of our wording and physically aing me. You are no longer my oppressor and my God will handle you from this point on. You have permanently damaged the last hope I had for you as a father to preserve our family with these last and final false claims made against me. You have broken our hearts for the last and final time. But despite her heartfelt words, it's like nobody's really listened. Instead, people drag Daphne left and right, not buying her side of the story at all. One user said, so she was fighting for her child to be with his father but then claims he R-worded her? What human would fight to have their child around to R? Let's be real. Another user says, he R-worded you but you moved you and your son to live one mile away from him? Yeah, whatever. And 50 Cent? Well, he didn't back down either. His came out with a statement, slamming Daphne's allegations as false and baseless. According to them, it's all just a reaction to 50 seeking sole custody of their son, Sire. They're making it crystal clear that Sire's safety is their top priority, and they're not messing around when it comes to protecting him. The disturbing allegations in the sworn pleadings recently filed in a court case related to Daphne Joy, the mother of my 12-year-old child, has required me to take all necessary legal actions to protect my son, Sire. The most recent false and baseless accusation accusations by Daphne Joy are clearly in response to my decision to seek sole custody of my son. My son's sire is my main priority, and keeping him in a safe environment is my only focus at this time. Now you know this whole mess just added fuel to 50 Cent's fire, and we all know he's gonna keep his foot on Diddy's till the bitter end. Besides 50 Cent, Joe Rogan's been chiming in on the whole Diddy situation too. On his podcast, he spilled the beans about how wild Diddy's parties can get. He even shared a story about Luke from two live crew bouncing out of one of Diddy's because things were just too crazy. From two live crew? Yeah, he said he was to leave early. Yeah. Or something, right? <laughs> when Luke from two live crew is leaving early, like, you got a wild party. During the podcast, they even drew parallels between Diddy's mess and that of Vince McMahon. Now, if you're not familiar with Vince McMahon, he's the big cheese behind WWE, you know, the wrestling gig. And just like Diddy, Vince is in hot water himself with a bunch of former employees, accusing him of some pretty awful stuff, similar to what's going on with Diddy. I mean, even Lil Rod, who's behind the latest lawsuit against Diddy, produced his latest album for him. And the thing is, the allegations against both Diddy and Vince are just as stomach churning. Okay, this is it. Uh, oh my one example God. of McMahon's extreme depravity. May 9, 2020, he defecated on Miss Grant during a threesome and then commanded her to continue his friend. On April 3rd, 1992, Rita Chatterton, a former referee noted for her stint as Rita Marie in the WWF in the 1980s and for being the first female referee in the WWF, made an appearance on Geraldo Rivera's show, Now It Can Be Told. She claimed that on July 16, 1986, McMahon tried to force her to perform SEX on him in his limousine. When she refused, he R-worded her. Former wrestler Leonard Inzatari corroborated Chatterton's allegation in a 2022 interview in New York Magazine. I was forced into <laughs> McMahon when I couldn't complete his desires. He got really angry. Chatterton filed a SA lawsuit against McMahon in December 2022. McMahon settled the lawsuit involving Chatterton that month with his attorney stating that he maintains his innocence but settled to avoid the cost of litigation. People familiar with the matter reported that McMahon agreed to a multi-million dollar settlement with Chatterton. Though the exact sum of the settlement payment was not publicly disclosed, it has been acknowledged Chatterton sought $11.75 million in damages in her lawsuit. Sounds a lot like Diddy's situation with Cassie, where he settled quickly using the same excuse, doesn't it? McMahon was also accused of SEX her by a worker at a tanning bar in Boca Raton, Florida, on February 1, 2006. McMahon was accused showing nude photos of himself to her as well as and of attempting to kiss the worker. At first, the charge appeared to be discredited because McMahon was in Miami for the 2006 Royal Rumble at the time, but it was soon clarified that the alleged incident was reported to police on the day of the Rumble, but actually took place the day before. On March 25th, it was reported that no charges would be filed against McMahon as a result of the investigation. Then, a separate tanning worker, who alleged that McMahon s aid her in California in 2011, filed a lawsuit against McMahon in December 2022. 
The WWE board, which McMahon controlled, began investigating a $3 million hush money settlement that McMahon paid over an alleged affair with a former employee of the company in April 2022. The investigation also revealed other non-disclosure agreements related to misconduct claims by other women in the company against McMahon and executive John Laurinaitis, totaling $12 million. By October 2022, the WWE had disclosed $19.6 million in unrecorded payments McMahon made to settle SEX misconduct claims between 2006 and 2022. Then, in January 2024, a lawsuit was filed by Janel Grant, a former employee at WWE Global Headquarters, between 2019 and 2022. Grant alleged that McMahon had coerced her into a SEX relationship, and, along with the WWE executive John Laurinaitis and a WWE wrestler who was also a former UFC fighter, S. E. X. T. F. K'd her and repeatedly S. A. Ed her during 2020-2021. Grant alleged that she was subjected to extreme cruelty and degradation by McMahon, including being defecated upon during a SEX encounter. Grant stated that McMahon had agreed to pay her $3 million in 2022 in return for a NDA, but stopped paying after only $1 million had been paid following the initial public emergence of the SEX misconduct allegations the same year. One day after the report of the claims on January 26, Deadline confirmed that McMahon had resigned from TKO. In a statement, McMahon denied the allegations and said the decision was made out of respect for the WWE universe, TKO, shareholders, and business partners. As for Diddy, we all know where we were on November 16, 2023, when Cassie filed a lawsuit, spilling the beans about a decade of alleged A in violence during her relationship with Diddy. John Diddy Combs, the rapper and music mogul, was accused of and years of a in a new lawsuit filed by R&B singer Cassie. Cassie describing the music mogul as a vicious, cruel, and controlling man, saying she was trapped and held down by Combs. She's now suing him for what she says happened during what she's calling a The lawsuit painted a harsh picture, claiming Diddy and A. Ed Cassie when she was 19 and he was 37. It also spilled details about Substance A allegedly pushed by Diddy, messing up Cassie's life. According to the lawsuit, Diddy was running the show in Cassie's life. From her finances to digging into her medical records, Cassie spilled that an MRI showed memory loss, blaming it on Diddy's and the pills he pushed her to take, especially loads of painkillers. Back in 2016, Cassie tried to cut ties with Diddy, and things got absolutely insane. The cops had to step in, but she didn't press charges because she was genuinely scared of Diddy's unpredictable nature. After their intense fight, he tried to smooth things over by showering her with fancy gifts, but the on Cassie told a completely different story. He ended up hiding her away in hotels for recovery. Diddy was also accused of using Cassie in some seriously messed up ways, even getting her involved with other male escort. Apparently, he got a sick thrill out of watching her with other dudes. The situation reached a new level with Cassie engaging in explicit activities labeled as freak-offs for cash. And get this, Diddy supposedly recorded it all, not for any good reason, but to keep Cassie in check, threatening to expose her if she tried to take legal action. Escaping this crazy situation was no walk in the park for Cassie. Diddy, described as a force, used his connections to cut her off from friends and family, instilling fear for her safety. In 2018, he's even accused of barging into her apartment and forcing her into non-consensual act. Even after Cassie managed to escape, Diddy's behavior stayed nut, with him trying to keep tabs on her every move. And just when you thought Diddy couldn't catch a break, he's hit with more serious accusations. An unnamed woman just dropped a lawsuit claiming that back in 1990 or 1991, Diddy and R&B singer Aaron Hall Ed, her and her friend at Hall's place. She and her friend supposedly met Diddy and Hall at an MCA event. Things got sketchy with the guys getting flirty and hands. Post-event, Diddy and Hall invite them to an after-party at Hall's pad. According to the lawsuit, Jane Doe was coerced into SEX with Diddy, and then Hall allegedly forced her friend into it. Then days later, Diddy supposedly shows up at Jane Doe's place, gets all angry, and allegedly Ayad and chokes her until she passes out. Why? The lawsuit claims he was worried the friend would spill the beans to the girl he was with at the time. Then another lawsuit hits him. This time, the alleged victim was just 17, and in 11th grade when she says Diddy, his bad boy president Harve Pierre, and some some unnamed third person did some heinous stuff to her. Serious trigger warning stuff. The lawsuit spills out disturbing details of an alleged 2003 attack in Diddy's studio. The woman claims she met Harve Pierre in a Detroit lounge, got f***ed up, and then things took a dark turn in the studio in New Jersey. Transporting a minor across state lines, kinda situation of R. Kelly vibes. Jane Doe claims she was chilling at a lounge in Detroit with a friend like two decades ago. Harve Pierre spots her, starts throwing compliments about her look, and 
lies about being BFFs with Combs. Then he tells her Diddy would love to meet her, gives Combs a call right there, and the music big shot personally invites her on a spontaneous trip to New York on a private jet. According to the lawsuit, that private jet ride took the teen to Teterboro Airport in New Jersey. From there, they hopped into an SUV with Pierre and another mystery guy, heading to the studio where Diddy was doing his thing with some artist. The legal doc, snagged by Rolling Stone, even has color pics supposedly from inside Daddy's house recording studio that night, and one of them shows the teen sitting on Diddy's lap. The claim is they kept plying her with a ton of booze and stuff while Diddy, Pierre, and the third dude wouldn't let up with the advances, constantly getting handsy with her. Things take a dark turn in the lawsuit. As the teen gets more and more wasted, everything starts to get hazy. Allegedly, Diddy takes her to a bathroom, strips off her skirt and undies, and, well, you know. The lawsuit, filed in the Southern District of New York, says she didn't agree to any of it, but Diddy just keeps going. At one point, he apparently turns her around, tells her to squeeze his nips to help him finish, then goes back to doing his thing. Miss Doe did not consent to having SEX with Mr. Combs, but he continued thrusting. At some point, Mr. Combs turned Miss Doe around to face him. He told her that he could not a word and asked her to squeeze his nips as hard as she could to help him get off. He then turned her back around and continued to R-word her, the lawsuit alleges. The teen is kind of fading in and out, and when she checks the mirror over the sink, she sees that the mystery guy from the plane has taken over, doing some messed up stuff from behind. And get this, Diddy's just chilling in a chair right outside the bathroom, watching the whole messed up scene unfold. In Doe's story, the mystery guy doesn't pay attention to her him to stop. Eventually, he steps aside so Pierre can have a go. According to her, Pierre starts with something non-consensual, in a pretty forceful way. Miss Doe remembers that Mr. Pierre was sweaty and that she had difficulty breathing, the lawsuit alleges. When Mr. Pierre finished, he left Miss Doe in the bathroom alone. Miss Doe fell into the fetal position and lay on the floor. Her V was in pain. So, once the teen kinda got herself together with a bit of help, they took her back to the airport and flew her back to Michigan. The lawsuit, which also calls out Daddy's House Recordings and Bad Boy Entertainment, mentions she's got hazy memories of the flight back and only really recalls being in her car super early in the morning. And finally, Lil Rod, who recently sued his collaborator for $30 million and accused him of SEX harassment, f***ing him and women, f***ing him, and several other acts. Jones also alleges Combs forced him to engage in unwelcome acts with and that Combs and his staff engaged in, quote, serious illegal activity. He claimed that Diddy f***ed his f***, touched his He believes that Diddy was him to have uh, He says that Diddy downplayed it just like he was a joke like, y'all, we just playing around. Um, just horse would, playing. Yeah. Among the laundry list of accusations is Diddy allegedly strong-arming Jones into arranging encounters with SEX workers and pressuring him into participating in some seriously unwanted bedroom activities, not just with these workers, but with others too. And if that's not enough to make your jaw hit the floor, get this, Diddy supposedly served up drinks to unsuspecting guests at his swanky parties. According to the lawsuit, there are even screenshots supposedly showing gatherings at Diddy's that included underage girls and more SEX workers. And get this, some of these ladies allegedly had their drinks tampered with at Diddy's direction. This legal bombshell also called out some other names like about Diddy's right-hand woman, Christina Corum, Universal Music Group CEO Sir Lucian Grange, and former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia Habtamarium. They're all caught up in this legal whirlwind. Jones says in the lawsuit that Grange, Habtamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group effectively worked together with Combs in a RICO enterprise that failed to adequately monitor, warn, or supervise the actions of Combs, his son, and his chief of staff. A RICO enterprise is any individuals or groups that act together to violate the Racketeer-Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. And get this, Jones isn't just looking for a slap on the wrist here, he's aiming high, seeking a cool $30 million in damages. But, an attorney for Combs is slamming Jones' claims as pure fiction, straight up calling them out as a cheap ploy to grab headlines. We have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones' attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored as Mr. Blackburn refuses to return our calls, the attorney, Sean Hawley, said in a statement. We will address these outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate action against those who make them. Now, according to Jones' lawsuit, he claims that back in August 2022, Diddy himself reached out to him to produce some tunes for the R&B album, the Love Album, Off the Grid, which ended up snagging a Grammy nomination 
nomination after its release in September 2023. But here's the kicker. Jones says his life took a nosedive after he agreed to work with Diddy. Jones alleges that Combs' SEX harassed and aid him while he lived with him at Combs' homes in Florida, Los Angeles, and New York, as well as on a yacht Combs rented in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The harassment in A included constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his A, according to the lawsuit. Jones says he was forced to work in Combs' bathroom as Combs showered in a glass enclosure. When he tried to raise the alarm about Diddy's behavior to Christina Corum, Diddy's right-hand woman, Jones claimed she brushed it off as just friendly horseplay, stating that those acts were Mr. Combs' way of showing that he likes you. The lawsuit accuses Coram of aiding and abetting Combs' essay of Jones and of working with Combs to G-word him into accepting a homo relationship. Jones also alleges that he was forced to solicit SEX workers and perform SEX acts with them to please Combs. To aid in the alleged recruitment, Jones said, Combs provided provided him with an exclusive bad boy baseball cap and required him to wear it to a Miami establishment as a signal to any SEX worker he approached that Combs was in town and had sent Jones to recruit them. Jones alleges Combs, whom he describes in the suit as forceful and demanding, and someone who does not take no for an answer, leveraged his power as one of the most influential people in hip-hop and business to intimidate him, including by to inflict bodily harm if Jones did not comply with his demands. On one occasion, Jones alleges, Combs forced him to walk as he displayed and bragged about getting away with shooting people. In a separate incident, Jones alleges, Combs shared that he was responsible for a shooting in a nightclub in New York City in 1999 with the rapper Shine, born Jamal Barrow. A jury acquitted Combs of possession and bribery charges in connection with that incident, while Barrow was sentenced to 10 years in jail. Jones was terrified of Combs and felt he could not tell him no, according to the suit. Mr. Combs consistently made it clear that he has immense power in the music industry and with law enforcement enforcement, the lawsuit says. Jones says in the lawsuit that he has video and audio evidence to support some of the allegations. The lawsuit says that Combs required Jones to record him constantly, and that on several occasions, Combs took Jones' cell phone to record himself. As a result, Jones alleges he has hundreds of hours of video and audio records of Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. Jones says in the suit that he believes Combs also him on February 2, 2023. He alleges he woke up dizzy and confused in bed with Combs and two SEX workers. In response to a request for comment, Jones's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, used a Latin phrase, res ipsa loquitur, which loosely translates as, the thing speaks for itself, referring to the lawsuit. Jones says in the suit that he was under an implied work-for-hire agreement and was not compensated for the songs he produced on the Love album. As a result, the lawsuit says, Combs, Love Records, Motown Records, and Universal Music Group were all unjustly enriched at his expense. Well guys, I know this is a lot to take in, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Drop them in the comments below, and we'll catch you in the next video.